How about that Book of Boba Fett season finale? It was absolutely a sight to behold. So if you haven't seen it yet, I would advise you go click out of this video and go watch the episode because it's pretty fantastic. And this review is going to be chock filled with spoilers. Now for those of you that have seen it or you don't really care about spoilers, strap on your jetpacks because this review is about to take Hey everyone, this is Brody from the Duel of the Ranks crew coming at you with another Star Wars review. In this week's review, we're going to be breaking down the Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 7, In the Name of Honor. Now this episode was action-packed to say the least. From beginning to end, we got non-stop awesomeness packed within a 59-minute episode. We first cut to Boba and Shennick returning to the Sanctuary. May Garza whip rest in peace. And we see how the Pikes left it in shambles. Now at this point, Boba wants to leave town for his palace, but the biker kids, bold as they are, let Boba know that they need to stay and defend Mos Espa, to which Boba is immediately convinced to stay back with him. So I guess it doesn't take too much to change his mind. From there, we cut to Cad Bane entering the Pike's Hangout, where he walks in on them, plotting to take over and win this turf war. Now, in that encounter, we learn that even the mayor never wanted the sanctuary blown up, but he's basically ignored since he holds no real power. Now, while the mayor was thinking about how losing that business was bad for local economy, the Pikes wanted to send a message to Boba and the townspeople that those within his protection aren't necessarily protected. We also learn that what many had already believed, that the Pikes were the ones to slaughter Boba's Tuscan family, not the biker gang. So if you listened to our podcast, you checked out the full review, and you heard Charlie's take about Boba slaughtering an innocent biker gang, probably was a church-going biker gang, probably be right by this point. But hey, this is the book of Boba Fett, so why not a flashback? Love the return of fi the fire spray ship and um seeing him come around those biker gang like that was the most badass thing possible him just like mowing them down that I was just, the violence and the energy we needed i just feel so bad because i just someone's gonna make a fan film one day about those guys and it's gonna re be revealed that those guys weren't actually the guys he was wanting to kill I it's know. gonna be some it was poor the sunday church going motorcycle club guys <laughs> that just know. they just out for a nice sunday drive in the desert and boba just blasts them away <laughs> yep he judged them it's a revenge <laughs> story in the making return. another spin-off series where the yes. child is gonna go after boba fett Guys, we have our fan film idea. <laughs> After this scene, we see Luke's X-Wing in R2-D2. Could it be? Is he back in Tatooine? I can honestly say I was so excited and then so disappointed when I only saw Grogu in that ship. But hey, I get it. With Luke on Boba's side, that camp would have been way too OP out the gate and it would have made for way less dramatic of an episode. So we then see Grogu... He made his choice. He wants to be with Daddy Din. And it was also funny to see Pelly find out Grogu's real name, say it's terrible, and that she's never going to really call him that, which is a total call out to all the fans who will forever know Grogu as Baby Yoda. So love that the writers incorporated that and broke the fourth wall a bit. Now from this point, we see all of Boba's troops have been posted out on different spots of Tatooine waiting for war. If any of the Pikes attack one spot, they'll have reinforcements there on the double, except the Pikes knew this ahead of time and attacked their spots. Now, while everyone pretty much comes out unscathed or with some scratches and bruises, except for those fleshy Gamorreans. Yeah, they're gone. No one's ever really gone. We then go back to the sanctuary where all the rest of the troops will end up meeting up here as well. And now at this point in Boba's eyes, this battle seems hopeless. And he tells Mando that he should just leave, save his own skin. But Mando, being a man of honor, says he'll stay with Boba until they both fall, just making a lovable character more lovable. As someone who spent part of their life at San Antonio, this part of the episode really gives you Alamo vibes. They were posted up in a sanctuary in the middle of a desert for what seemed to be their inevitable end. 
absolutely loved it. Now from this moment on, the episode was almost entirely action. We get one of the most amazing action sequences in Star Wars history where Boba and Mando go out and fight the Pikes and cover each other's backs. For all you Battlefront 2 fans out there, let's take a quick look at this kill count. <laughs> As Boba and Mando start to become overrun, the reinforcements are in. Fennec Shand, the biker kids, the people of Freetown, and Black Crescenton come to his aid. And then the droidicas slash spider droids on steroids walk in and they are nasty. Everyone is forced to retreat and fight from scattered positions. Boba leaves to find additional reinforcements and we see Mando is reunited with baby Grogu. And can't we all say that this was the best hug we've ever seen in Star Wars history? Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or if you think there's one that one-ups it. Now after this, Bobo returns with his pet Mythosaur, I mean Rancor, who helps make quick work of these powerful droids. But seriously, loved this callback to the Star Wars Holiday Special. If you're ever going to pay a nod to that piece of whatever it is, this was the way to do it. But seriously though, why was no one shooting at the droid the Rancor was fighting? The shields were down and everyone was just watching to see what would happen, like they were watching the newest King Kong movie. And could be wrong here, but pretty sure there were plenty of nods to that giant gorilla himself in this episode as well. We also love seeing how Grogu uses the force in these sequences, from stealing an essential bolt, to, uh, one of the droids, to putting the Rancor to sleep, which was a nice little lion and lamb imagery when he cuddles up next to it. And then we see that while he's powerful and an amazing ally for Mando, he's certainly not at the level of a Jedi Master. But it was still cool to see how size matters not, and you're left to think about what his impact on the Star Wars universe is going to be 400 years from now. Then there's that fight between Cad Bane and Boba. Loved the dialogue here as fans who haven't followed the Clone Wars learned that Cad's an older bounty hunter and has known Boba since he was a little boy. Cad reminds Boba of his past with his father and acts as a symbol of his old life. He quickly shoots Boba and removes his helmet, saying he has one last lesson for him, to not trust anyone. Boba then seizes that moment of opportunity, grabs the gaffy stick, flips Cad Bane, drives the gaffy stick right into him, which was awesome imagery to see the weapon that represents his new life, which has been reforged killing the representation of his old life. This scene and dialogue were fantastic, and if you're going to kill off an iconic character like Cad Bane, this was the way to do it. Finally, the episode wraps up as Boba walks through the streets of Tatooine, and the people of the town show that they love their new leader. They bow and even give gifts, all while a medieval remix of the th theme of Boba Fett's being played, which was cool to hear. Now the town is safe and we see Mando and Grogu flying off in that N1 Starfighter as they head into Season 3 of The Mandalorian. And yeah, Cobb Vanth is alive and it looks like he's going to get some mods, but that really wasn't too big of a surprise seeing that he was only shot once in the shoulder. Plus, it's Timothy Oliphant. He's awesome. <laughs> There's no way they're killing him off that soon. And who's with me that Cobb needs his own show? Let me know down in the comments below if you agree that a Star Wars version of Justified would be absolute perfection. Now, overall, the story was simply, it was just fantastic. The characters were great. All technical aspects seemed to be executed to near perfection. Loved the music, especially Boba Fett's theme remixed at the end. And this story helped set up some awesome new content for the overall immersive Star Wars universe. Now, while it was a super action-packed episode and not filled with a ton of story, that's what the other six episodes were for. They were here to set up for a crazy finale. So overall, The Book of Boba Fett was a fun ride, and while it wasn't as good as the second season of Mando, pound for pound, it offered a ton of great stories and fan service. From here, I'm good with not doing a second season of Boba, as 
We'd love to see how all these stories with Mando, Grogu, Boba, Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, and other characters tie into reclaiming Mandalore from hopefully Moff Gideon and Thrawn. Now, with all that said, do you agree with our review? Do you disagree with our review? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to check out full Duel of the Ranks episodes, be sure to check out our podcast where we put out new episodes every Friday morning. You can also join our live sessions. And if you want to see all the other types of content we have, go to duelofthereanks.com where you can see our blogs, our episodes, all sorts of stuff. we got a store. You have a newsletter up there. If you have your own hot takes that you want us to read on the show, then be sure to go check that out on the website where you can submit in the form and we'll, we'll read them. This episode was a ton of fun. Hope you enjoyed our review and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.